Arsenal 5, Sporting 1, Jokerez in the back pocket, Shithousery from Gabriel, Bakayo Saka, Kai Havertz, Martin Odegaard and many a player just doing well, we're doing our thing and you know, for me, Mikel Arteta, thank you for taking the handbrake off and these last two games in the Premier League Champs, we've scored a lot of goals, would have loved the clean sheet against Sporting. But it is what it is, people. And we keep this momentum going into West Ham United on the weekend. I think Manchester United um, over that as well. And obviously, I don't like to laugh at people when they're down. But as soon as Mr. Harlan said, oh, stay humble, things have gone from bad to worse. Pep Guardiola is losing his marbles. And to see Manchester City go three goals up and then draw three three is crazy. And I hope Pep's all right. I mean, he said he wanted to hurt himself. I mean, this man's losing his marbles, man. And... Odegaard is an assistant player. He is the system. I do think there's some truth in that. Declan Rice obviously got an assist. He has 20 goals slash assists in one and a half seasons for Arsenal. Eight goals and 12 assists, people. Moving on from that, Sporting hadn't lost a game all season and were undefeated at home in over a year. And as it says here, until Arsenal showed up, people. Pardon me. If I'm honest... Watching the game again, I think the second half, naturally, Sporting had to come out on a bit of crud because they're embarrassing their fans. I think naturally, there was a. I don't think Arteta would have done it with the players, but I think being 3 0 up, naturally, there was an element of complacency. And, you know, I think the goal we conceded was poor. I think Jokerez had no change. Obviously, I think the most important goal we got was when Odegaard was fouled in the box and Saka slapped the penalty in. Nice to see even Trossard score. Would have loved to have seen Tini get some minutes and Sterling, but obviously, Gabriel had to come off. So, it is what it is, and hope Gabriel's injury is nothing serious. Bakayo Saka doing Bakayo Saka things. I'm definitely not surprised by anything. 15 goals and assists in 17 games this season in all comps for Bakayo, and he got a goal and assist yesterday. Big game player, man. Big game player. Arsenal scored five plus goals in the Champions League away game for the third time in the Champions League era. We did it against Inter Milan in 03. We did it against Fenerbahce in 08. And we did it obviously in 2024 against Sporting Lisbon. Before this evening, Ars or yesterday better yet, Arsenal had failed to score in their last four Champions League away games. Today, they equaled their best ever away win in the Champions League era, while their XG of 3.89 is their most in an away match in the Champions League on record since 2013-14. So... It was basically a perfect performance, weren't it, people? And I might be a stick club up, clean sheet. But Kyle Saka has both scored and assisted a goal in four of his 13 Champions League games, 31%, the highest percentage of any player in the competition's history. But fair enough, and I rate that more because, what, this is technically only his second year in the Champions League, and the fact that he's 23 is scary, you know, because this is when Wenger used to say, when you turn 23, that's when you really arrived and you know your job and... We've only scratched the surface of the Bakayo Sackers, the Martin Odegaards, the Gabriels, the Salibas, so on and so forth. Big up Jurian Timber as well, boss of the game, man. Big up him for the assist. I'm I'm happy for me in particular to see Trossard, Havertz and Martinelli score goals as well, if I'm honest. Um, Arteta spoke on Gabriel, who he's a shithouser with that celebration. We had to make the change because he was feeling some discomfort. I was able to make the change for Raza, poor thing. I couldn't make the sub, we had to get him out. Fair enough. So we hope Gabriel Magalhães' injury is nothing serious, man. I don't think they've lost here in 18 months. They've been in top form. They've been better than everyone they've played here. To play at that level with fluidity that we've done today, very pleased. I mean, the sample size isn't the biggest, but I think it's fair to say, through Mikel Arteta's time at Arsenal, that's definitely the best Champions League night we've had, or definitely the best Champions League away night. I, obviously, I'm more happy when we beat by... Did we beat by Munich? Or they scored a late equaliser, innit? I, I don't know, but... I was, I don't know, I don't know. In fact, it probably is, it, pro, it probably is, it probably is, people. Fair enough. So, yeah, man, moving away from that, before we look at the transfer news and all of that stuff, it's key, I'm keen to see what the gaffer has said. Um, on the statement win over Sporting, which boosts, crucially, pips us further up the table, man. What, is there two, two to three games left in the Champions League in this kind of fixture? Let's just finish in the qualifying stages, make sure we don't have to play that extra qualifying game and keep it moving, people. Um... He said, yes, because it's a team that's in top form. I don't think they've lost a game here in 18 months. So that tells you the level and the difficulty of it. But I saw the team really convinced with a great energy and belief that we could do it. I was so pleased against Inter. There were some things that didn't go our way, the penalty. But I said to them, we continue to go in that direction. We're going to win some big, big matches in this competition. And today we have managed to do that, especially the purpose Um especially the purpose and the way that each player was playing to make something happen. And I agree with that. Everyone was a protagonist. Everyone in their own individual role was trying to make the difference. And I, and again, I know I've mentioned Timber. I've mentioned Calafuri. He's a bit of a madman, but Timber, Calafuri, Gabriel, Saliba, Martin Odegaard, Partey was good. I think Moreno had a decent cameo. I think Rice did his thing, obviously got an assist. Martinelli got on the score sheet. Saka and Odegaard, they're, they're ballers. Kai got on the score sheet. Um, David Raya, 
you know, 5-1. When you look at the scoreline, obviously daylight between them. When you break it down, more so because of the second half. Sporting asked one, two questions and our keeper, which unfortunately for him, because I wanted it to stay like the first half where he weren't called into action. David Ryan made a number of saves. So I think Arteta is bang on the money with everyone kind of being a protagonist. Not to wait, not to hope, to make it happen. And I love that. When you come to this stage, it's difficult. The crowd is there. The opposition is top. And they show today as well in many moments how good they are. That's what I'm very, very pleased with. And then, yeah, he, he thanked the fans that travelled as well, which naturally you should. Um, obviously, Bakayo Saka did his thing as well, people. What did our star boy say? I thought his, his goal did give us the momentum back. Against a team like this, there's always going to be a period where you're under pressure, which is true. We conceded one, but the, the rest of the night we dealt with quite well. We showed ourselves tonight on our top level. The away fans were top tonight. I could hear them all game. I really enjoy the atmosphere. That's what I like to see, Saka. You enjoy the atmosphere because it's only going to get bigger and bigger as we hopefully go where we want to go as a football club. I was proud. I was most proud of not letting the occasion affect us. We knew this was a big game. We lost our last Champions League game and we haven't won away in Europe in, Europe in many games. I don't remember the last time we even scored an away goal in Europe. So we just went out there with full confidence like that didn't even happen. We were top today, so I'm proud of that. I think it's our biggest Champions League away win in over 20 years. We came here and played against a top team who hasn't lost at home this season. So we're really proud of ourselves and we need to keep going like this. Can't disagree with anything there. The gaffer's extended thoughts. Of course, he's going to enjoy that, people. Obviously, I would say the performance was better against Sporting. We probably deserved a point against Inter, but we lost, so it doesn't really matter. We know Odegaard was amazing. And today, and even Nottingham Forest, we've missed that. I think, I don't know what you've done, Arteta. I don't see the tactics, but I think you've put down the handbrake and allowed the team a bit of freedom. But I think the players have been more, a lot more ruthless. And when you deep it, I'm not criticising the goals. None of them were glamorous, you know. I'm happy with that, you know. Martinelli and Kai Havertz scoring tappings. I'm here for that, you know. Moreno having a shot, keeper fumbling it, Trossard just following in. These are the kind of goals we need to score. Not everything has to be dramatic. Gabriel Header, you know, the sporting lad lost Gabriel and it was poor, but I'm here for that. And big upset Peace FC for returning. Yes, because you cannot speculate. And we had a period after 39, 40 minutes that we started to do that and had to stop it because that's the tendency that teams want to do to control it. We were not good at doing that. Unfortunately, they scored very early in the second half and that created some momentum, but we dealt with that really well. As I said, it was a big performance, a big win, and we're really happy. It evidently was a statement win, people. Um, on what's changed during the international break. A lot because we were training with 11, 12 players for long periods, so they could not train and play. Then suddenly almost everyone is fit and available. It's true we are still managing certain players, but their level is rising. I have no doubt we have the right ability. We're going to be a really good side. On Gabriel, we don't know because he was feeling some discomfort. I was about to make the change of Sterling, but I couldn't make the sub and we had to make other ones. On Thomas Partey's form, who did his thing, I would agree with you. I think it's one of the best performances I've seen from him, especially the way he dominated the game. So that's the level he can play. He's progressing. This year, he's been so consistent as well because he always has a role. That's a big thing. He's a massive player for us. On the key to winning, we were so good. You have to be so good in every department. We suffered as well in many moments in the game, but we were so effective and so efficient. When you start to attack the position, and today, that was a big difference. I don't think anyone can complain there. William Saliba, who made his 100th appearance for the club, and I thought he would score people a header. I thought Gabriel's goal would have been his, but he said... I think we had two or three weeks before the international break when it was really tough. But now we get back, we play two really good games, but it's not enough. We have to keep going like this. We have a big game on Saturday, but it's good. It's good for confidence that we won today. And let's keep going like this. No clue how Diamande never got sent off of sporting, but fair enough. The coach always told us to believe because we are a really good team. We had some bad times, but now better times are coming. So we have to stick together and keep going like that. It's a bit mad, isn't it, that Saliba's missed just 20 games. And a lot of that came in is technically his debut season. 100 appearances where he's been a player, an Arsenal player for longer than three years, but it, including this year, these three years, including this year, has been when he's proper been in this kind of thing. Um, on Martin Odegaard, sorry, Saliba obviously said he's proud to make 100 appearances or play 100 games. I think he's one of the best midfielders in the world. We are so happy to have him back. We are better with him, so I hope he won't get injured again. Of course, we have to enjoy playing with him. We can see since he's back, we are better. He's top three in the world. I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but I think top three. I love this guy. He worked hard at the training ground, so I'm not surprised he came back from injury like this. But of course, it's not easy when you haven't played for four weeks to come back at this level. I'm not in shock. He's a top professional. Key word there, top professional people. Arsenal scored as many... 
goals last night in five as they had done in their previous eight Champions League games. So hopefully we turn the corner in that regard. Saka actually has more Champions League goal contributions than Kylian Mbappe over the last two seasons. Just one more though, but push the agenda. Jokeres responded to Gabriel shithousery where Gabriel was doing that. What did he say here, people? In which... I'm not going to, I know some people, everyone's been hearing about Jokerez and they might have looked at that game and thought, oh, there's nothing about him. You know, I do think he huffed and puffed a bit better in the second half and looked better when Kivio came on and had some half chances. But if you've been gassing him or if Arsenal really been scouting him and they watched him yesterday and just based on that game, they're not going to go for him. I think that, that would be a problem. He just had a bad game. He's playing against two top, top centre halves. And he, let's be honest, he really had to make his own luck. But I like him. I think he's a, he's a unit in it. But anyways, the man himself said, He's welcome to steal it if he can't create his own celebration. Uh, he done it on your block, mate. I didn't know he did that, but it's funny he likes my celebration. Still all may not be as it seems. Fair enough, man. Jokeres, you're more than welcome to come to the carpet. Barca have made Alexander Isak their number one summer target. Someone that's also been linked with Arsenal Football Club, people. Um, so Isak's been linked with Barcelona and Arsenal as well, people. He's yet to agree personal terms with Newcastle. Obviously, Jokeres, ironically, two Swedish strikers. Jokerez is still being linked with moves as well. Do Barcelona have the money? I don't know, people. So we'll have to look into that. Allegedly, Jokerez has his heart set on a move to Manchester United, despite also emerging as a target for Arsenal and Chelsea. 43 goals in 50 games across his first season at the Portuguese club. And he looks set to surpass that tally this term. 24 goals in just 19 appearances. And at 26 years of age, you'd feel now is the time. And he did get a hat-trick against Pep Guardiola's side. But hey, didn't see nothing yesterday. I mean, it makes sense. I still think Amarin and Diamande... Well, sorry. Amarin should buy Diamande and Jokerez, if I'm honest. You know, obviously, Diamande didn't have the best audition, did he, yesterday, really? He's so lucky not to be sent off. Romano has said that we're working on a new deal, people, to commit Ethan Nunwary people over a new long-term deal. It's considered a priority, which it should. When he turns 18, tie him down, man. Good future. Bayern Leverkusen CEO is hit out at Arsenal and all other clubs pushing to sign Florian Verts. What has he said here? very high and why shouldn't they be high as long as he has a contract here as long as he feels comfortable here as long as he knows that he can play top football here and as a top team and can celebrate successes then he's happy the thought of all players coaches coaching staff and management of the club are in the here and now we have enough to do it on the pitch until the end of the year it often annoys me that there's such speculation i can admit that but the here and now is important nobody's interested in next season at the moment nothing has been finalized I mean, I would love Florian Verts. I don't think Arsenal are that interested because of the money. Allegedly, we're prepared to activate Martin Zubamendi's 60 million release clause in January. Must admit, I don't believe that, but I'd love to know you lot's thoughts. <coughs> Apologies, people. Still ill. Uh, Arda Galer's future has been spoken about by Fabrizio Romano. He said, two clubs, not from Spain, but from other countries in Europe, reached out to Real Madrid <coughs> for Galer once again. Sorry, people, man. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna die if I don't. <clears throat> Being ill is not fun. Two clubs from Spain, but two clubs not from Spain, but from other countries in Europe reached out to Real Madrid for Galera once again. And let me tell you that in the last year, from January to the summer window, and now in recent months, I think more than 15, 16 clubs approached Real Madrid, also from Spain. But in this general case for Galera, Real Madrid always said. Now, now, once again, already two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Real Madrid keep rejecting any approach with Galer. No interest in them loaning him out. No interest in selling him. They believe they've signed a fantastic talent in Galer, so they have no interest in moving forward in discussions or talks for Galer. He's staying at Madrid. A lot could change. A lot can happen. But there you have it, people. We've gone over um, Ethan Numwery. Galatasaray have been have been informed they won't be able to afford a permanent deal to sign Victor Osman in the summer, which will be a boost to Chelsea. And I'm sure some Arsenal fans like us to get involved. And Buermo is a January transfer target for Arsenal. The striker has eight goals in 14 games this season. I don't know if we if I buy that. Napoli are ready to sell KK this summer if he does not sign a new contract. The 23-year-old has been linked to, to Manchester United. Um, you would have seen Evan Ferguson is set to be made available for loan in January. I mean, could Arsenal pattern up a loan with an option to buy? Obviously, apparently, you know, you previously see the asking price of 100 to 120 million. Could we get him on loan? Does it make sense for him, though? Because you're not going to play ahead of Kai Havertz. You might get game time, but are you going to play ahead of Kai Havertz or do you need to go somewhere you're going to play week in, week out? 
I still think he's a top, top quality player, but he struggled for football. And 100 to 120 million at this moment in time is a complete madness for him, people. Allegedly, Arsenal have held some talks over the potential transfer of Crystal Palace midfielder Adam Walton, who's also on the radar of Liverpool and City. Quality player, just kind of been done dirty with injuries, if I'm honest with you, this season. It's understood that Arsenal hope to try to get a deal done for somewhere in the region of 55 but million, obviously. But well, Palace would like to ask for more than 65 million for the 20-year-old. And this annoys me because you saw the videos, people are saying, let's get him at Blackburn. Like, obviously, you might want to see how he adapts to the top level, but the price inflates people. We've also been linked with Chris Wig, Chris Rigg of Sunderland, who's doing quite well. Apparently, Arsenal, Tottenham, Palace, West Ham, Brentford all ha have had scouts in attendance at games for him this season. Once again, people, we've been linked with Matteo Ritagui. Um, whose price tag has allegedly more than doubled. Arsenal move for 14 goal striker fresh off Champions League race despite price tag doubling. But hey, we'll have to see. And he's doing his thing for Atalanta. I don't really buy that. I just think it's a striker that's been linked with us. And yeah, Jokerez got no change out of Saliba and Gabriel. Zero goals, completed zero of his five dribbles, won only one of his 10 duels, only had five touches in the up box. So yeah, in relation to the sporting game, the transfer news, that's everything, people. At the time of making this vid, I'll be watching Liverpool Real Madrid with you lot. So I'll be doing a watch along. So I'd love to see you lot there. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment and subscribe. One love. Thank you.